Peace be with you. I am Bruce Wozniak. This is Catholic Sports Radio, located at the intersection of your faith life and sports life, and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and lots and lots of other platforms. Thanks so much for listening, and do be sure that you've hit the subscribe button so you get every episode automatically every week. There is no cost to subscribe. It's simply an option you select one time for convenience. There is even a subscribe page on the website that tells you not only the many places where, but how you can subscribe. Again, though, there's no cost to do that. The show website is catholicsportsradio.net. You can listen there, but there are also links there to hear the show on all kinds of podcast listening apps. And there are links on the website to Catholic Sports Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please be sure to like, follow, comment, etc. on those platforms. I would love to see more people on those social media channels and more interaction. You can always send comments through the website. Plus, you can post thoughts, suggestions, and engage with other listeners and even post prayer requests in the show's Facebook group, which is called CSR Listeners. There's a button for that, too, on catholicsportsradio.net. Also, please help me spread the word about the show. I'd appreciate it if you would tell others about Catholic Sports Radio as I continue trying to draw in more listeners in the hopes that this ministry will bring them closer to Christ. And by the way, if this is your first time listening, thank you. And do go back and listen to previous episodes of Catholic Sports Radio. There have been a lot of great guests, a lot of really good testimony. In terms of my ministry moment for this episode... If you've ever spent time driving in another city, meaning someplace other than where you live, I'm talking about a city that has a major professional sports team. If you're like me, you find yourself craning your neck to marvel as you drive by their sports stadium or arena. I just did this when I was in Miami and was seeing the Marlins Stadium where they play baseball. You might even go so far as to snap a picture or even pull the car over to stop and get a few photos or possibly walk inside. The same teams who we root against, who are our fierce rivals, we all of a sudden, because we're in different surroundings, we become fascinated with them and want to know more about what's inside. We get a curious smile on our face. And then think about travelers who come to your city, who all of a sudden stop because they want to see your team's stadium or arena. Heck, maybe even while they're wearing apparel of their team. You're proud of them seeing your team's home. As Catholic Christians, we should use that same scenario to change our perspective of not opposing teams, but individual, quote, rivals in our life. We need to consider their inner beauty, that God created them in his image too. We need to look beyond ourselves, beyond the home base that is our own familiar personal arena, and become more curious about these individuals near and far, who we've chosen to otherwise observe with a bias or a discriminatory perspective, And remember that regardless of their location or their loyalties, they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. They are worthy of pulling our spiritual car over for and getting to know more about. Moving on now with episode 58. My guest is a goalkeeper for Nashville SC of Major League Soccer, having been selected in the first round of the MLS Super Draft in January. He had attended UNC Charlotte, where he earned all Southeast Region honors three times, including his senior year when he was also Conference USA Goalkeeper of the Year, Golden Glove Award winner, and First Team All-Conference. Welcome to Catholic Sports Radio, Elliot Panico. Hi, Bruce. It's great to be speaking with you. Likewise, Elliot. Thanks for making time today. do appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I'm happy to be on the show. Well, in addition to all those sports accolades I just read off, you are also a Catholic. Duh, obviously, since you're on Catholic Sports Radio. Although I should add, cradle Catholic. Yes, I. Uh, both of my parents are Catholic, and I grew up uh, going to Mass on Sundays. Um, also with my, my older brother, Eric. So um, we were raised to, to be good, good men and to, to practice the faith. And where was that that your family grew up? I'm originally from Kentucky, but we spent a few years in Omaha, Nebraska, um, and I went to Catholic school there until second grade, and then we moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, where um, I've spent the rest of my my life um, growing up. Okay. So when did your journey into soccer take place? Did you ever play any other sports? I did play other sports growing up, um, but my journey with with soccer started at St. Vincent de Paul Catholic School in in Omaha, Nebraska, um, with 
my first soccer coach was was Mike Lynch. He he's now the uh, women's soccer coach at, at Belmont Abbey College. But I loved playing sports growing up, and um, eventually just just picked soccer to want to keep doing because I just loved it and um, had a lot of friends who played with me as well. And to fast forward just a little bit, as I mentioned in the intro, you played your college soccer at UNC Charlotte. And you told me ahead of today that you feel that when you started out there, your faith life changed too. Talk about that. Yes. So when I went to UNC Charlotte, um, I was primarily going there to play soccer, but I had no idea what the Lord had in store for me. Um, He blessed me with some wonderful teammates who really cared about me and um, saw that I was going to to church on Sundays, but uh, invited me to, to practice my faith. Um, every other day of the week and we started to read scripture together and um, that was when um, we were reading scripture together and we were reading in the book of revelations and um, it was revelation 316 which says for because you're lukewarm and neither hot nor cold i'll spit you out of my mouth and that was when i you know knew the lord was calling me to to give all of my life to him and not just to be lukewarm and just give him one day a week, but to trust him with my entire life. Um, and I'm so grateful for my teammates who, who started me off on that, on that faith journey. Um, I'm very grateful for them. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you're referring to teammates who themselves were not even Catholic. Am I correct? Yes, that is correct. They were both, um, kind of non-denominational or Protestant Christians and um yeah at that point in time i uh i really started to um i kind of asked the question of wow these these guys are are living out their faith in such a strong way um and we have different traditions but it really only began to strengthen my catholic faith because i started to go to the catechism and and listen to catholic answers and try and understand all the protestant objections to the faith and um Everywhere I turned, I just um, found such beauty and truth in the Catholic Church, and it was able to um, just lead me closer uh, to Rome, if you will. And would you say that that actually made you and those guys closer as teammates on the soccer field? Yes, definitely. Um, All of those guys uh, that I'm referring to, you know, I still talk to today, and one of them, um, you know, he's my best friend, and I imagine that I'll be I'll be talking to him for the rest of my life and wow. um yeah just we we grew so close um because we had you know faith and soccer in common something t- two things that we both loved dearly Awesome awesome well we've had some guests on this show who have talked about focus in case there are people in the audience who don't know what that is tell them what that is an acronym for but then also tell your story about finding focus Yes, so FOCUS is the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, and it's a nationwide, I think worldwide organization, Um, and my journey to FOCUS is a little bit different than the traditional one, um, because I was um, the only Catholic on my team and the only one that I was aware of at my school, um, I started to do some research to find um, Catholic groups that I could get involved in while at school. So I did a little internet search and, and found Focus um, was one of the first ones that popped up. And unfortunately, there wasn't one at my school, but there was one just uh, 30 minutes away um, at Belmont Abbey College that I mentioned earlier. And I just wrote one of the Focus missionaries an email asking um, if I could meet up and maybe come to a Bible study. And the rest is really history. Um, we met. Um, we met the next week, and um, it's such a beautiful, a beautiful uh, ministry. And I'm so thankful for um, finding focus because I've, I've really grown in my faith through them and what they have provided for me. And then on top of that, last year you attended a major event that just continued to help grow your faith life. Yes, that was uh, Seek 2019, uh, put on by Focus. It was in Indianapolis, and I believe there were uh, over 16,000 college students there. Wow. And um, yes, it was such a beautiful scene for 
all 16,000 of us um, to celebrate mass together every day. And wow. um, it, it's something that I'll never forget. It was really, truly um, a visual uh, representation of the mystical body of Christ, just to be present there with everybody um, during mass and adoration. And throughout all the, the talks, um, it was truly a, a, an inspirational and educational time for, for my faith. Wonderful, wonderful. Listeners, I certainly can't have a guest on the show who was a first-round draft pick in a major professional sports league and not bring that up with him. But before I go there with Elliot, I want to mention that whether you work at a Catholic school or church, or if you work or volunteer for a diocese or are involved with your parish or some other ministry or organization that does events, such as a sports night, a men's conference, a diocesan event, or maybe even something a little less predictable, a little less traditional. Maybe it's out in the secular world. Something else where my Catholic Sports Radio ministry is a fit, I would be most grateful for the opportunity to come in as a guest speaker for whatever the occasion is that you or others are planning. Do familiarize yourself with my faith walk and my sports background, both on episode one of this show, as well as on the website where it says meet the host in the about section, and then look for the five-question request Bruce as a guest speaker form on catholicsportsradio.net to start that conversation. And then also on catholicsportsradio.net, if you do like what I'm doing here, if you're tuning in regularly to Catholic Sports Radio, if it's helping your faith life, if you believe in this ministry, if you enjoy Catholic Sports Radio, you're getting some type of value, some benefit from it, and want to help out, I would appreciate your support. I am just a one-man show taking this all on by myself, including doing all the producing, hosting, and editing of this show every week, as well as the administrative and promotional work, booking the guests, and so on, which means that all the expenses come out of my pocket. So if you feel I'm giving you something each week that you'd like to support, utilize the Donate to CSR button on catholicsportsradio.net, which will give you the opportunity to contribute in whatever amount you wish, securely, online, And for those of you that don't like the idea of putting credit card information online, just email me, bruce at catholicsportsradio.net, and I will get you an address to send a check or money order to via U.S. mail. I mentioned on last week's episode that I had just had someone do that and was going to contact him to see about giving his name out on the air. And then lo and behold, this morning, someone made an online contribution electronically through the website. Anyhow, if you're cool with doing it online, look for the Donate to CSR button on catholicsportsradio.net. Pray about it and see if this ministry might be somewhere that you feel inspired to include in your tithing. I would truly appreciate your support. Over the last few episodes, I've been giving examples. I mentioned last week about a men's conference I attended. I was blessed to be approached there by someone who presented me with quite a potentially big opportunity for Catholic Sports Radio. But I'm looking into what it would take to pull it off, and not only would it require me to commit more time, but resources that I don't have, meaning that Not only might I have to make a purchase or two, but probably even bring in someone to consult, if not help with it. So there are definitely fees that would come with taking all that on, too. So in case you're curious about what an example is of the costs that your contribution would help with, that's just one. So no contribution is too big and no contribution is too small. It all helps with the various expenses related to running Catholic Sports Radio. Elliot, you also have a story about volunteering at a high school youth group on Sundays. Go ahead and share that with us. Yes, so uh, I mentioned earlier that I began to go to Belmont Abbey College uh, for Bible studies um, through Focus, and I began to make many friends there. And one of my friends uh, asked me to uh, help out with a high school youth group because they were lacking uh, some male presence in the uh uh, the volunteers for the for the high schoolers, and so um, I said, you know, I would love to. And um, you know, the next week I I started volunteering and spending time with the kids, um, giving talks, um, and really just getting to know them and and to pour into them, um, and t- also to share about my faith and how important it is to me. Um, you know, living out my daily life and um, sharing the way that I I lived that out in college something that they're, you know, going to be doing in the next few years. Well, and I want the audience to know that Elliot is being humble because this was not five minutes away there in North Carolina. Tell them where it was. Yeah, so after I said that I would, um, you know, help out, it was then made clear to me that it was 
uh, 45 minutes away uh, across the border in South Carolina. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, it's a great time uh, to to drive and, and to, uh, you know, prepare myself for uh, for youth group. But, um, you know, after I went the first time, I knew that, you know, it was something that I really loved and the drive made no difference. Beautiful, beautiful. And by the way, there was quite a reward for getting involved with all that. Yes. Yes, there was. I, uh, I met my now fiance. She was also a, uh, a volunteer there. And, um, I met her and we, we became friends. And, and, um, a few months later, um, I knew that, you know, I just had to, to ask her out on a date because I knew that if I didn't, I would be regretting it. So, um, that was a couple of years ago and, um, we just got engaged and we're looking to get married this coming to December. Wonderful. And of course, you were spiritually nourished. When I say there was a reward for getting involved with that, it's because I knew what you were going to say. But obviously, there was a lot more that was going on that you were being fulfilled with through the Holy Spirit. At the same time, it was a bonus that you were able to meet your now fiance. Yes, it was uh, definitely uh, a calling from the Lord and, and something that I felt great peace about knowing that uh, I went there to um, try and spread his word and, and to fill, fulfill what he is asking of me. And, um, you know, with that, yes, came a beautiful reward that I'm so grateful for. So let's talk about your now being a major league soccer goalkeeper. I want to guess that as tempting as it might be to get a little cocky, what with being a first round draft pick, you probably get humbled real quickly when you realize that that means you're a rookie. Yes. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Um, I think already I've been I've been humbled quite a bit. Um, a funny a funny story that occurred um, this preseason is once um, I made it to to preseason camp and um, you're not you're not guaranteed guaranteed a contract if you if you get drafted. So wow, um, I was able to earn a contract after the first uh, week or two, and then from there they asked me what number I would like to be and. Um, I told them, you know, I'll take 25, um, cause that was the number that I got as a freshman at Charlotte. So it had some meaning to me, but then a few days later we, um, traded for a player for a million dollars and lo and behold, his number is 25. And so they said, well, um, he's quite important, important to us. So he's actually going to be number 25. You have to pick a different number. <laughs> so that was a, a, a definitely a humbling moment. But I think I'm sensing from you that you're someone that knows that God's hand is on everything that we do. And so as much as you might want to walk around and say, I'm Mr. First Round Draft Pick, you say, thank you for humbling me in that way and letting me know my place and letting me just be grateful that I'm on the team. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm definitely very grateful to, to do this, uh, for a living. And, um, I'm hopeful that, you know, I'll be able to do it for as long as the Lord wills for me. But, um, yeah, it's definitely by his grace that, uh, he keeps me humble. And, and I know that, uh, being a professional athlete isn't the greatest thing in this life. So I'm definitely very thankful to know that and, and to, to live it out as best as I can. Wonderfully said. And I love when it comes from a guest because to the audience, if you've been with me for a while, thank you. And you know that I say words to that effect quite frequently on the show, but it's wonderful when it comes from the guest as well. I wonder, Elliot, is this something you prayed for over the years? Were you longing to make it to MLS as your college career progressed? Yes, I think um, as a as a young kid, uh, it was my dream to play um, professional soccer. And um, as I got to college, I saw that um, that pathway was attainable based on the, the players who've gone before me. Um, but after all of uh, I, I fell into my faith and I fell in love with it, it became clear to me that, um, you know, my plans are, are not as great as God's plans. And um, my prayer was was um, just to ask the Lord for um, for whatever he wanted. But also when I, when I do play soccer that, you know, I might give my best and glorify him through it all. And then whatever happens 
because of it, um, it may be his well. And yeah, this is where it's brought me. And um, I'm so thankful to be here. It, it is truly a great blessing. Um, and I hope to do it as long as he allows me to. Amen. Amen. I wonder for those that wonder about how they can blend their faith life with their sports life, which is one of the objectives of Catholic Sports Radio. Do you have anything that you do, Elliot, around games as it relates to, I don't know, anything from a personal prayer that you say to yourself, maybe bringing a rosary out under the field with you, something in the locker room, anything of that nature? Yes. So uh, even every practice or every time that I step out on the field for whether it be a practice or a game, I love to pray while I'm warming up, uh, giving thanks for the opportunity to be there and asking for uh, protection and um, the ability to, to push myself and to work hard um, for the Lord. And then after every game, I love to um, to get on my knees and say the glory be. Um, and that's just something that I started doing in college. And, um, you know, I like to do just to to really put things into perspective, win or lose, um, all the glory is his. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's great perspective, great perspective, and hopefully something that you'll be able to share with, I was going to say young fans, but fans of all ages, if there's opportunities to shake hands, post for pictures, sign autographs with fans. Yes, absolutely. I think that that's something that he's put on my heart is, um, you know, through through this, um, hopefully I can, you know, turn it into somewhat of a ministry and just to, to share, um, the good news and to all people and, and let them know that, you know, soccer gives me joy, but there is something that gives me a greater joy and a greater hope. Um, that is a, a goal of mine as I, as I started my professional career. So I'm guessing that you have moved to Nashville from Charlotte. Yes. I, um, I, I just moved in last week to my apartment um, cause we were, we were in Florida for about five weeks for preseason. Um, and that started in January and, um, I've moved in, but it's currently empty. Um, my parents, uh, they're so kind. They're driving all of my, my belongings up here today. So I'm wow. really looking forward to seeing them and, um, it'll be great. I'll finally have a bit more of a, a homey space than just an empty apartment. And of course, you'll also have to find a new home parish in Music City. Yes, absolutely. I've been going um, to the Cathedral of the Incarnation in, in downtown Nashville, and it's probably one of the most beautiful churches I've ever seen before in my life. So um, I'm really happy to, to go there. And um, there's a lot of students from Vanderbilt that go there that are my age. So I'm hoping to um, continue to get plugged in there and, and hopefully, um, yeah, make it make it my home parish. And then what about you and your fiance as it regards to marriage preparation? Yes. Yeah, so that was something that we had to discuss and figure out um, because we knew that me moving away was a possibility once we got engaged in November. And we met with the pastor of the church that we're getting married at twice in person, um, just to kind of get in as much preparation as possible before I left. But now, um, because of the distance, we've we've gone for an online option, oh. and we, we've started that. And um, there's going to be a couple kind of walking us through it. Um, so I'm really I'm really thankful for that. And I think it'll be a great way to uh, to prepare for marriage. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Elliot, it's been great having you on. All the best to you for the 2020 soccer season and all the best as you and your fiance continue in your marriage preparation as well. It's really great having you on the show. Yes. Thanks, Bruce. It was an honor to be on with you. God bless you. Listeners, we will close fittingly with an athlete's prayer. So let's do that together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help me to play the game, dear Lord, with all my might and main. Grant me the courage born of right, a heart to stand the strain. Send me a sense of humor, Lord, to laugh when victory is mine, to laugh if I should meet defeat without a fret or whine. Give me the grace to follow rules, to fess up when I'm wrong. 
When silence or some other thing wins plaudits from the throng, when foes are tough and fighting fierce and I am getting weak, dear God, don't ever let me show a broad, bright yellow streak. And teach me, Lord, life's game to play just one day at a time with thee as coach and trainer, Lord, real victory must be mine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. This is Catholic Sports Radio. Find more at catholicsportsradio.net, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Cath Sports Radio on all those. C-A-T-H, at Cath Sports Radio. I'm Bruce Wozniak, and remember, it's not whether you win or lose, it's that it's Jesus that you always choose. Thank you.